Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today, our guest is Father Paul Felix. He is a pastor of the Church of the Annunciation in Houston, Texas. He is also the chaplain for 40 Days for Life. And you know that we have had um, Sean on our show, we had um, Steve, and we've had uh, Dr. Robinson on our show, all affiliated with 40 Days for Life. Well, they have a chaplain, and he's here today, and he's gonna talk to us um, about his beautiful ministry to 40 Days for yes. Life. Certainly uh, a beautiful, strong apostolate like 40 Days for Life that goes all over the world. And they're coming up on their campaign, um, which will be September 28th through November 6th. Right. And we'll be talking about that too. And they've seen some 22,013 lives saved. 22,013 lives saved through 40 Days for Life. Uh, since 2007, 120 abortion mills, mm. 120 closed, and uh, 242 abortion workers have quit. <clears throat> what a great, great ministry. So what are the spiritual dynamics? What does it mean to be chaplain of 40 Days for Life? Is there any spiritual warfare going on with this? Is there a pro-life spirituality that can help strengthen God's people for this task in this day? And so Father Paul Felix is going to be sharing with us about those areas mm -hmm. and many others as well. Just a dear, dear holy priest in the Lord and how we need to hear from him. He's done a lot of work in post-abortion healing. So he's loving them both, loving the baby inside, loving the woman in crisis pregnancy, <clears throat> men and women who've experienced abortion, letting them know that God is merciful and that they could be forgiven, that they could be set free. It's going to be a very, very special show, and I think you'll see yourself in this show throughout. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest is Father Paul Felix. He is the pastor of the Church of the Annunciation in Houston, Texas. And why he's here today is because he's a great holy man of God, but he's also the chaplain for 40 Days for Life. And you can wis visit their website, 40daysforlife.com. Come. Yeah. Well, Father, we are excited to have you here today. <laughs> well, thank you so and much. we thank you for coming all the way in from Houston. And um, first, we want you to tell a, our family a little bit about yourself, how long you've been a priest, and where you're right now being a priest and where you're pastoring. And then we'll talk about all your beautiful pro life work. Well, I'm a native Houstonian, born and raised to a Catholic family. Uh, the fourth of six children, actually seven, <coughs> uh, the, the first child was miscarried. Mm -hmm. And we want to recognize yes. uh, the babies that were mm -hmm. miscarried too. Um, and so, uh, but I grew up in Houston and um, uh, was studied, went to the seminary, St. Mary's Seminary in Houston. I'm a diocesan priest and was ordained in 1990. And so um, all these years now serving is in my 33rd year of priestly ministry. Time flies when you're having <laughs> you really fun. Do, yes. <laughs> now, Father, I was looking over your, your bio, and gosh, you, you're, you do a lot. Um, you really promote a Spanish language ministry, um, new evangelization work. You founded a, a medical ethics group under the patronage of St. Gian Beretta Mola. Mm. Um, renewal work. Um, you, you just kind of doing a lot of prison ministry, I think, you were involved with. Yes, so yes. you really, I mean, as well as your priestly ministry in terms of the sacraments, which is so central to your life, 
you really seem to be radically identified with human beings, the human person. Mm -hmm. You know, not yeah. only the pro-life work, which we gotta, we want to focus on today, but it seems like you get yourself attached to all sorts of people, and even those who know the Lord, renewal. Um, you college students on, on campus, and so, I mean, you just have a passion for, I guess it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Second is like unto it, love your neighbor. Yes. I mean, you're really doing that stuff. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's such a, you know, the Lord gives us this opportunity. We have the life that the Lord gives us. We don't know how long it's going to be, but the time that we have, it's so important that we uh, make it as impactful as we can, mm -hmm. cooperating with His grace, yes. you know. Yeah. And striving to the end, yes. right? Yes. Well, this church you're at, <clears throat> Church of the Annunciation. Yes. Is it a new structure? <laughs> <laughs> it's the oldest church in continuous use of any faith in Houston. It's the mother wow. parish of all the Catholic parishes in Houston. And uh, we are in our 150th year since the dedication of the church. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell you this before, but my parents were married at Annunciation by my great uncle, who was a Benedictine priest, an abbot. And so... Um, At that I, same altar? Yes. <laughs> wow. And I tell people that my brothers and sisters and I were all spiritually conceived yeah. in Annunciation. How oh, how precious, <laughs> how warm. And now look where God has you right yes, back there. Yes. Our yes. cathedral church, St. Paul's in Birmingham, is also celebrating its 150th year. Beautiful. So it's yeah. beautiful. Very so cool. tell our family how, when and how did you get involved when the pro-life movement appeared on your radar? Actually, I think uh, it got on my radar screen. I was a youngster, maybe um, eight or ten years old. I don't remember precisely my age, but there was somebody in um, the larger family who um, uh, got pregnant outside of wedlock. And I remember um, overhearing my mother talking on the phone with relatives and, and um, just making the statement, you know, that rather than abort the baby, she would... Uh, adopt the baby. Mm -hmm. you know, she'd be willing to do that. And, mm -hmm. and um, that was very impactful for me mm -hmm. uh, because we were a large family, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, But that openness and that, that generosity, the, the commitment to the sanctity of life. Mm -hmm. And um, so that planted a seed. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, of course, uh, the Lord grew it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I have seven brothers and sisters. And I think moms who have a lot of children, they really, really believe there's always room for one more. And it's kind of like maybe somebody else would take them out. They're like, okay, bring the baby to me because right. she's full of love, yeah. right? And she's, she's full of hope. And so she's like, rather than move into a despairing, bleak moment of choosing to abort, there is hope. Yeah. And sometimes even when we say that to another person who might be considering abortion, then they think, well, okay, then maybe I could parent the baby or, you know, they work out another way. So thank God for your mother's beautiful yes. But it was brought right to you. Mm. So even though you were young, you had some idea of what abortion was, that term? Yes, so I think so. So you know this is really happening now, right? Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. out there, but now it's like this is life or this is death. How do we respond to help bring life? I mean, this is an existential encounter. Yes, very much so. And... Um, you know, it, it puts you where the rubber hits the road, right. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, you realize in some, at, at that age and then also through the years, you realize the very incarnational reality of the challenges with which people are, find themselves faced. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, uh, but at the same time, the call and the opportunity to look at things in a supernatural kind of way, mm -hmm. not merely from a physical, worldly way, but also a metaphysical, the beyond this physical world mm -hmm. and a spiritual way of looking at things and thinking, you know. And believing yes. <laughs> that all life matters. Yes. I mean, the culture doesn't believe that. The culture believes it's a problem, it's getting in my way, and um, I need to remove it and, and get rid of the dignity and value of a human being, almost as if they're throwing out a Coke can. Mm -hmm. and, and we've just so devalued. So for you to receive that formation in the domestic church, the yes. witness of your beautiful yeah. mother and your family, and so obviously that affected your further formation. When did you know that you were called to be a priest? Um, it was something that was a dawning of light, so to speak, over a period of time. But 
as I mentioned before, we had a great uncle who was a, a priest and he was very important to us. We're also close to the priests in our parish. Mm -hmm. uh, we belong to a diocesan parish and uh, had various uh, priest friends and uh, various things going on in life. I also had gone into business when I graduated high school. It was a service oriented business. And I found that when I was doing um, charitable work for people, uh, and providing services that I wasn't getting paid for, mm -hmm. I found that so fulfilling. Mm. And um, it, it was part of a, a whole matrix of things that were happening in my life, I think by God's providence, that really made me realize uh, uh, and, and drew me into that relationship with our Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that really focused me, I think, on how I was to direct my energies. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, I'm sure you've studied through the whole abortion movement. You mentioned metaphysics earlier, but I'm wondering about how you see the roots of the abortion movement. We can go through philosophy and, and what took place in culture, but there's also metaphysics involved, it seems to me. Right. So what are your findings? Uh, because you're a spiritual man, you try to form people, you're a chaplain, you understand spiritual warfare but what is the enemy that we're fighting? It's not the people, but what, what's going on here? Well, it really goes to the original sin. You know, the temptation uh, uh, that Satan presented uh, to Eve and then um, that constant um, uh, presence of the wiles of the devil working to seduce people and lead them into making the wrong kinds of choices. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a gospel passage where our Lord is interacting with his interlocutors those who are uh, opposed to him. And uh, he, he says that, you know, um, your father is uh, Satan, that he's, and he's a liar and he's a murderer. And I think we have to really keep that in mind when wow. we're dealing with the, these confrontations. That wow. The devil will present himself to us in many ways uh, as a friend, smiling, offering glittery things, easy things, comforts things that we, we view as benefits and yeah. so forth. And those are all seductions to uh, uh, really bring us to let our guard down, and then he goes in for the kill. Mm -hmm. And th the ruthlessness and brutality of what abortion does shows that mm -hmm. in the starkest of terms. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to be, uh, I think one of the important <coughs> roles that we have is to unmask that deception mm -hmm. and, and show the reality for what it is. You know, and so often those who are advancing the pro-abortion mentality, the ideology, they never really talk about what it does, mm -hmm. what a procedure really entails and so forth, yeah. and, and, and how horrifically barbaric it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's powerful that, you know, what you were sharing about what our Lord himself said, your father is, is Satan, your father's a, li uh, a liar mm -hmm. and a, a killer. There was another term in a there. Murderer. Mm -hmm. A murderer. A mm murderer. -hmm. Uh, not your kind of namby-pamby preacher was Jesus, mm -hmm. right? I mean, he probably would have, some people might call a bishop and say, this guy's got to go. Or something. <laughs> like, well, what are you talking about? That isn't very nice. Um, but wow, but, but you, you're concerned about spiritual warfare. You have to know your enemy mm -hmm. yes. so, that, so that you can come into the light because he's a deceiver. And every woman who comes to that place of abortion is, is really, I mean, there's some volitional will, but it's also deception, it's illusion, lies. And like you said, somehow, some way, and this is what we do in the Pregnancy Medical Center, we only get these girls for a short period of time. We want to somehow, some way pray that they could change the way they're seeing, change the way they're seeing. What, what actually is abortion? What is abortion? What does abortion do? And, and showing this, and is this what you really want? And you know, we have to also recognize that um, the setup for abortion and the proliferation of abortion also uh, comes with the advent of the pill and artificial contraception and what a devastating effect that has had mm -hmm. in especially Western society and not just in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to marriage and family yeah. life mm -hmm. and the whole way that we view uh, the human person mm -hmm. and so forth. And, um, uh, and, and that use of artificial contraception then sets people up for mm -hmm. taking recourse to abortion. Absolutely. 
But of course, we also know that artificial contraception, particularly the, the, the chemical uh, artificial contraception, if it doesn't prevent a conception, it also causes abortion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. so we have the surgical abortion and we have the, the um, chemical, chemical mm -hmm. abortion, which it's hard to put a number on that, mm -hmm. but uh, it's staggering to really think about the magnitude of, mm -hmm. of uh, the damage it's done yeah. and, and the reality of how deeply people end up getting wounded mm -hmm. by taking recourse to these things that the devil is encouraging them to do and try to present it as something as a benefit to them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Pope Saint uh, Paul VI was so prophetic when he issued Humanae Vitae mm -hmm. and talked about what the consequences would be if, um, if his, his teaching was ignored or mm -hmm. set aside. Mm -hmm. And it's all come to bear. It's all come to pass. And you know, we see on a daily basis the wreckage that walks in the door mm -hmm. from the lie that contraception was my ticket to free sex. And, but meanwhile, I have sexually transmitted diseases. I have three babies out of wedlock, different baby daddy, and, and I'm only 23 years old. Yes. You know, and so, and, and abortion, the contraception is the fruit from the same tree. Mm -hmm. So when a client comes in, now her birth control has failed her because she was quote unquote being responsible. Abortion is her answer. More of the lie, more of the deception. And our client coming in, my greatest enemy is deception. Yes. I'm, I'm praying that Jesus lifts the veil yeah. and that she could see. Yeah. Um, you know, but, th and the church is silent. Protestant and Catholic churches are silent. And so we're part of the problem that, of the deception because we're not speaking the truth. We should be, we should, it should be a clarion call of everything that is yes. good and true and beautiful. Yes. I mean, I, I had a, a client this week say to me, I'm praying and I'm fasting and this is my season, you know, dropping all these and I'm having an abortion because I'm praying and fasting about it. She prayed mm -hmm. and fasted and came mm -hmm. to the conclusion that it would be okay for her to have an abortion mm -hmm. and that God has to forgive her. I mean, and God has to forgive her. This is the kind of spirituality that's I mean, that, and, and the church is silencio. Nobody's saying anything. And so it, it, it is, it's like, no, we have, we have the truth and we want to set people free. And so we have to, we have to okay. speak it, right? So what, what and, and part yeah. of that is that I think uh, people like myself in roles of responsibility to proclaim the word of God, to form people's consciences, mm -hmm. to speak the truth. You know, you have this aspect of justice that it's, we have a serious duty to speak the truth about good and evil, right and wrong, sin and virtue, okay? Um, uh, but we also have the great privilege of announcing the mercy of God. Mm. And, and it's so important <laughs> though, you can't have uh, mercy without justice and vice versa. And we, but it requires also that we expose ourselves mm -hmm. uh, to ridicule or hostility. Um, it just comes with being a servant of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be willing sometimes to take the hits. Right. Well, it's, it's called take your cross and follow me and, 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 and be there. Yes. And you, it's, things are going to get said to you and done to you. But it's for the good of people. To God be you the know, glory. That, 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 that people are created in the image and likeness mm -hmm. of God. You know, and, and that's the foundation for the dignity of every human mm -hmm. person, the value, the worth of every human, you know, uh, a single individual, a single um, um, uh, zygote, you know, after that, that uh, fertilization mm -hmm. that happens and God gives that soul, creates and infuses that spiritual soul. That human being is worth more than all the material value mm -hmm. of the whole cosmos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is, it is uh, so uh, 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 tremendous. And, and we have to put that, those things into perspective. So, so um, the lies have moved people from seeing people as objects uh, of love mm -hmm. to objects to be used mm -hmm. and abused. Mm -hmm. And we see that the world we're living in is becoming uh, more and more barbaric and more and more inhuman. But, you know, thanks be to God, he's placed it in the hearts of his people to have a heart for the truth and to see the evil and say no and stop. And at the same time, to avoid going in 
with a sledgehammer right. and doing more damage than, right. than good, mm -hmm. but, but rather disciplining oneself in those gifts that the Lord gives us for the spiritual warfare mm -hmm. um, to overcome evil with good. Mm -hmm. Father, this has just flown by. Thank God we have tomorrow to share further mm. with you. Thank you for your sensitivity in all these areas and the wisdom that you are giving to us all here today. We're going to take a break. There's plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. And you go to, go to 40daysforlife.com, 40daysforlife.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, believe it or not, Father John Paul is here today, and we're so excited to have him. Father, what did you think of the conversation with Father Felix? It's great to hear a vocation story and uh, just to hear calls within a call, mm -hmm. uh, to hear a vocation story unfold and Father telling his story about him being raised in a Catholic family and hearing his call to the priesthood, but how different calls come within a call mm -hmm. sometimes and I think that happens not just in the priesthood but also in in the vocation of the baptized vocation even within marriage you know there are, there are different you know manifestations of the Holy Spirit calling us to you know be open to do good works yeah. and to save lives mainly yeah. um, the thing about the, um, the the statement that he talked about that uh, at the moment of conception, the, the value, the material and spiritual value of a newly conceived child mm -hmm. is worth more than the material universe to make the cosmos mm -hmm. put together. They're like mm -hmm. what's happening in you know, a woman's mm -hmm. womb mm -hmm. when a child is conceived. Mm -hmm. um, and then all throughout the pregnancy, you know, the different, different things that are happening uh, eyes forming, hands mm -hmm. forming, mm -hmm. feet forming. Mm -hmm. um, all those things happen very soon, actually, mm -hmm. very soon. Mm -hmm. Not five, six months, seven months down the line, but very shortly after uh, conception, even in the first couple of weeks, all yeah. those things are, are starting to form. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to talk about that. Like you said, people need, to, we, we can't be tight-lipped anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to keep talking about it over and over and over again. It's like kind of, it's kind of like the lectionary cycle, mm -hmm. right? We have a three-year cycle. We're, we're preaching about the same readings, the same gospels over a three-year period. And then it starts over again. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are people who were perhaps seven years old, and now they're 10 years old, mm -hmm. and then 13 years old, mm -hmm. and then 16 years old. Mm -hmm. They need to hear that message in the period of their life that <clears throat> they are. Mm -hmm. um, does that make sense? Yeah, with the great I, hope that that I, word I is getting written on our hearts, exactly. on our minds, and we're Sowed absorbing into it. into our minds. Yeah. I mean, they may have heard mm -hmm. that message as a kid about the dignity and sanctity of human life, but here they are as a 20-year-old mm -hmm. or even a 30-year-old mm -hmm. in a crisis. Mm -hmm. So they need to hear the message that they heard years ago, perhaps, mm -hmm. growing up even in a Catholic family. And you yourself have told me how many times that you have had Catholic families in her choice in a crisis pregnancy thinking that they might have to choose abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even Surprise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even within our pews, yeah. we have people in crisis pregnancies, and they need to hear that message that the dignity of human life, yes. mm -hmm. the mercy of God, <clears throat> It's all real. It's all real. Mm -hmm. And we need to walk with them in that, mm -hmm. in the mess. Yes. You sound like a missionary of mercy. <laughs> I am. Well, to close us in a prayer and a blessing. <laughs> Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. And may he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Mm. Thank you. If we could only embrace how much the Lord Jesus Christ loves us, 
in the essence of our being, even in the midst of our sin, even perhaps because of our sin, that he's come to seek and mm -hmm. save that which is lost. God will take every evil and turn it to good. He'll take the curse and turn it into a blessing. He will even take death and he'll turn it into life. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.